so my name is Adrian. I am the Charity Job Recruiter Success Executive over here at Charity Job, and I'm going to be the person that's walking us through the webinar today. So first things first, let's go through an agenda of everything we'd like to achieve today. So I'm going to be going through uh, the objectives of things we'd like to have sort of understood about the system here. I'll be going through why to use Charity Job Recruiter and listing some of the details of, of things it can bring to you during your hiring process. Next, I'll be going through a demonstration of the system, showing you all the tools that you have at hand. After that, I'll go through a full list of benefits that can come from using our system. After that, I'll go through questions. Now, at the top of your screen, you should see a Q&A section. Now, at any point during the webinar, feel free to enter a question into there, and we'll try and answer as many of those as we can at the end of the webinar here. We're aiming for it to last about 35 minutes or so. So if we don't get around to answering your question, we will be following up with an email to answer any that we miss. Finally, after that, I'll be going through the next steps to follow on from here. So objectives of things we'd like to achieve today. So the aim of this webinar is to give you a full understanding of firstly what Charity Job Recruiter is and go through the system and all the benefits it can bring you. I'll then show you how to efficiently use a system like this. This is a system that we really have put a lot of work into and we really want you to make the most use of it that you can. After that, I'll be going through a list of the benefits of a system like this can bring you during your hiring process. So why use Charity Job Recruiter? Uh, as I previously mentioned, we understand that going through a hiring process can be quite a lengthy and difficult process here. So it is something that we really wanted to give you as much as you can to possibly be able to make this as efficient and as simple as possible. So we created this system for you to be able to drastically reduce the time that it can take you to hire. Using the system, it really does help you to increase the number of applications you receive using tools such as Quick Apply. You'll be able to reduce any bias during your hiring process by using our anonymous recruitment. It's a really great system for having everything to do with hiring all managed in one place for you. Uh, I've done recruitment previously and I know it can be quite frustrating having to go to one website for one tool, another website for another tool, go to your emails, etc. So we wanted to be able to have everything all managed for you in one place. And finally, and almost most importantly, it's completely free to use when you post a role with us. So let's go through a demonstration of the system. Now. This here is our Charity Job Recruiter dashboard. So when you log into our system, this is what you will see. Here you can see some jobs that I have posted previously in the past. And when you have the Quick Apply function active on them, you'll see the word applications here. And underneath that, the number of applications we have received. To access the applicant tracker system, all you need to do is click that number there. And it will take us through to this screen here. Now I'm going to go through this as if I'm a recruiter looking at my applications for a job I've posted and we'll go through the individual steps there. So to start with you can see all of my applications here on the left hand side and you'll notice they have a little interesting color combination here for their names. This is our anonymized recruitment and what this does when you have it turned on for a job ad is it will strip back any personal information about a candidate, things like their name and their email address, and give them a color food combination. What this does is it really helps to effectively reduce bias during your hiring so that the only thing you are looking at is the person's skills and experience. Now, these are all applicants that have come in through our system here, but should you receive any applicants from outside of charity job that you wish to include in the system here very simple to add them all you need to do is go to the top right of your screen up to the add candidate button 
enter the candidate's information, upload their CV and cover letter, and add them. This will then add them as one of these squares here. This is really useful because when you add a candidate, when you have anonymous recruitment on, it will actually anonymize the person that you've added. This is great for if you're adding them on for another hiring manager so that whilst you may know the person's information when they've been added, they will be anonymized again, helping to reduce that bias. Now let's have a look at one of our candidates that's applied here. So when we click on the profile, we'll see a full breakdown of the candidate's profile here. So we can see the cover letter that they have sent and the CV that they have applied with. Both of these are available to be downloaded for any internal purposes. Scrolling down further here, we can see a breakdown of the work history on the CV and qualifications the person has listed. If you have screening questions as part of your application process, these answers will be found at the bottom here also. Now, screening questions are a really great way to find out crucial information about your candidates when they've applied. If previously you've used lengthy application forms, these are a great, great way to subvert those and be able to find out the key things you're looking for. Now, scrolling up to the top here, we've got a couple tabs that we're going to run through. So firstly, the evaluations tab. Now, this is a really great tool here for if you've ever had one of those meetings where everyone on the hiring team sits down, we have all the CVs printed out and we discuss what we think of the various candidates. Now, this tool can help almost completely eradicate that, that meeting. So what we can do here with Aquamarine Avocado, as we know them, is we could submit an evaluation. So we've had a look at the person's CV and we think it's a good CV. They have some relevant skills. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them four stars. And we're going to say good CV. Relevant skills and submit that. Here you can now see an evaluation that I have submitted on the 8th of February. If you have other users who have access to the account, they will also be able to submit evaluations here too. So that way you'll be able to see that I've given them a four star. Uh, my colleague has given them a five star. This is probably going to be a candidate that we'll want to speak with. If you do wish to add multiple users to an account, it is very simple to do so. All you need to do is go up to the top here to settings and to users. And go up here to invite user. Here you can insert the email address of whoever you would like to add. They will be sent an email inviting them to join. All they would need to do is accept, and then they will have access to the account as well. Now, going back to our ad, the next tab I wanted to show you was the notes tab. Now, this one's quite self explanatory here, but it's a really great tool for making notes of anything that might happen during your application process. It might be that you've noticed on their CV they had one crucial piece of experience that's going to be very beneficial to you. So here, for example, we'll just say previous managerial experience. And we'll save that. And here you can see that has been logged by myself on the 8th of February. This is really great for keeping track of everything all in one place again for you. The last tab that I wanted to show you was the activity tab. Now this is really great because it tracks everything that happens with this individual candidate on this individual job. So here you can see, for example, that I've submitted an evaluation for them and I've added a note. This is really good for keeping track of the candidates as you move through the stages. If one day you should log on and see that a candidate has moved to a shortlisting stage, but you yourself didn't do that, you'll be able to click on the profile and see exactly who moved them and when. Now I mentioned just then about moving candidates between different stages. 
So what we'll do is we'll move through a few of these candidates through to shortlisting. To do so is very simple. All you need to do is pick them up and drop them down like so. It's very easy to move them across. With any candidates we've given an evaluation to, such as this one here, you'll notice that when I move them over to the next stage, the evaluation disappears. This is because the evaluations are done per stage during our process. So here you can see that during the applications, they were given a four star. But it may be during our shortlisting, as I mentioned, we noticed they had managerial experience. So this person could then go up in our books. And there you can see the different stages of evaluations. This again is great for keeping track of your opinion of a candidate as they go through the process. Now for some of these candidates over here, sadly, they don't quite have the experience that we were looking for. So what we are going to do is we're going to mark them as unsuitable. Now when marking candidates as unsuitable, you have two options for what you can do. You can either go onto each profile and mark them as unsuitable individually, or using these squares here, we can select multiple at a time or highlight the entire tab. So we'll just do that here. And we'll mark them as unsuitable. When you do that, it will give you, a, it will prompt you to give a reason for why. So here we'll just say these people sadly didn't have the experience that we will look for. And we'll mark them as unsuitable. Here you'll see now those candidates have disappeared off of this list. To keep track of any candidates that you mark as unsuitable, all you need to do is go up to the active button up here, click on that and go to unsuitable. And here you can see all of the candidates that we have marked as unsuitable. If at any stage during your hiring process, you think, well, maybe we were a bit hasty with a few of those people and we should maybe give them a chance to sort of have a phone interview potentially. To do so and move them back to active is very easy. Much like marking them as unsuitable, you can either go onto each profile individually and click the back to active button, or you can highlight multiple and do the same. These have now been moved back to our active screen. Now, with these candidates that we have here, we have shortlisted, what we can do is we can send them an email to let them know. Now, you might be wondering, currently we only know them as Azure Peanuts, Maroon Noki, for example, but I want to speak to them in terms of their own real name. When you contact them by sending them an email through this system, it unanonymizes each individual account. So what we'll do here is we can either, much like the uh, marking as unsuitable, we can either go onto each individual account and send an email, or we can highlight them all and send one as well. So we'll just quickly do that. Uh, do excuse if you see the flickering here. This is because this is a test account. This won't happen for yourselves. Now, when sending an email through our system, it will be sent with your name that you have logged in with, but from an anonymized email address. Now, if any of these candidates do reply to said email you send them, the response will be sent to the email that you have logged in with. So here for these candidates, we'll just type in something simple. Hello. And insert email just to keep it nice and easy for us. You will then be able to save this as an email template for future use by using the button down here. And these templates will be stored in here. If you wish to personalize the email in any way, what we can do is add a placeholder to the email. And what this will do is this will customize each email as it is sent to the candidates and personalize them. Now, these emails are sent as individuals for GDPR. And you might be wondering, because currently we know them as the anonymized color, 
with the first name there, will it call them that color? Well, no, our system will send the email to the person's actual name. So what we'll do is we'll just send that email here. You can see the confirmation in the bottom right, and now the candidate's names have been revealed. Now I mentioned about the email templates we have. If at any points you wish to sort of edit one, maybe you change some of the details, etc. It's very easy to do. All you would need to do is go up to settings and to email templates. And here we'll have all of our templates that we have written stored. We'll also be able to create new templates or, as I said, be able to edit any of them in here as well. So going back to our job here. So we've shortlisted a couple of these candidates and what we think we're going to do is we're going to actually move one of these through to interview. So moving this candidate over here again, you'll notice the evaluation has disappeared. We'll click onto their profile and we can actually schedule an interview through the system. So to do so, we'll click on this button here. And it will bring up this window. Now the interviewers that will be available to be chosen will be anyone who's been given access to the accounts. For this one, you can see it's just myself. Next, we'll choose the date and time. So for example, we'll say tomorrow at midday. And we'll choose the duration and we'll say about 45 minutes or so. We can also send a confirmation email to the candidates about this interview. Here, I recommend if it's going to be a phone interview, letting them know the number that will be reaching out to them. If it's a location, letting them know the address. But you can also insert in here Zoom or Teams links should you wish to do the interview virtually. So here we'll just put something simple. Looking forward to meeting you and we'll notify and schedule. Here you'll see the confirmation. And you'll also notice a banner that has been added to here. Coming out of the screen here, you'll see there's been a banner added to the person's square here as well. To keep track of all the interviews you have booked in through our system here, it's very simple to do so. All you need to do is go to the top right to the calendar. And here you can see the interview that's been booked in. We'll go to a weekly view so we can see a breakdown by hours. Now here you'll notice that it is a green highlighted interview. Now, this is because this is an interview that I am involved with. If there is an interview that I am not involved with, this will be highlighted in grey. Now, should you wish to integrate this with your own personal calendar, all you would need to do is click on this button here and use this link here, and you'll be able to integrate that with things such like Outlook. Now, going on to the interview here, when we click it, we can see a breakdown of the candidates and the job they have applied for, the date and time of the interview, who will be interviewing them, and any notes that you have written to the candidates. Through here, we can also cancel the interview should need be and send an email confirming that. Now, I mentioned about integrating this with your own personal calendar. So if we are booking in lots of interviews on one day. And perhaps maybe we go to book in an interview at half past 12 on this day. Now, when we go to book that in and confirm it, the system will actually stop us from doing so because it has recognized that there's going to be a conflict of schedule. This way, we don't double book ourselves and we don't have to worry about having to be in two places at once. Now, going back to our ad here, there's a few more tools I would like to show you. So you can see here across the various stages that I have, they're quite varied and your interview schedule might be completely different to this, but you'll be happy to know that this is perfectly customizable to your experience. So for example, I have a phone interview stage here, but you might not want to have a stage there. You might just want to go from shortlisting to interview. Well, very simply, if we go up to the top of the tab here, we can actually delete stages and that has now removed that for us. You might actually maybe want to include that. You might maybe want to have a different kind of stage there. To add stages is very simple. All you would need to do is go up to the top 
and go to either the left or right hand side and you'll be able to add a stage. So there we'll just add back in the phone interview. And we'll save that and we can now add candidates into it. If you should ever want to sort of rename the tabs, that's very simple to do so with this button here. It's also very easy to rearrange the different uh, interview stages we have there. So maybe you like to do a phone interview after the first. Much like the candidates to do so, all you would need to do is pick them up and drag them over, drop it down, and that's now rearranged it there. Now, with my candidates I've got here, it's quite easy to see all of them. But for yourselves, when you'll have many, many applications, it might be quite difficult to find the specific one that you're looking for. Using this banner up here, we'll be able to search by individual candidate names. So for admin here, just type in their name and they are now the only person that is appearing for us. One last tool that I wanted to show you is personally my favorite and I think the most useful one we have. Now this is our filter function tool. Now let's say that this role that I've posted, I've specifically asked for the candidates to provide a cover letter and I don't want to see applications for anyone that hasn't. Now what we can do with this filter function is click on here and apply the filter and we will only see applications that have provided us that cover letter we've asked for. So we'll apply the filter there and you'll notice that we have lost a couple of the candidates and this is because they did not provide us with that cover letter we asked for. Utilizing our filter function, we can actually go one step further than this as well. And we can ask the system to search for specific keywords within a person's CV or cover letter. So the example that I like to use is that this is a fundraising role. I only want to see applications from people that have previous fundraising experience. So we'll apply that filter there. And you can see that sadly, none of the candidates I have here have the word fundraising in it. But what it might be is there might be someone who has mentioned being a fundraiser in their CV, but they're not appearing here. This is because the system searches specifically for the phrase that you have inputs. So this is a really great tool for finding the exact skills and things you are looking for. So that was the demonstration of the applicant tracker system here. I'm just going to exit back to the presentation. So let's go through a rundown of the benefits of the system like this. So as I mentioned, we have many great tools at hand for you to help you efficiently and easily manage your hiring process. You're able to schedule interviews through your system. You can communicate with all your candidates easily. You'll be able to collaborate with your coworkers. And as I mentioned, this is all completely free to use when you post a role using Quick Apply. Now let's go through some of the stats surrounding this system here. So we've done a lot of research surrounding hiring within the charity sector. And we have found that the candidates we spoke with said that their two biggest pain points when looking for a new job is lengthy application forms and not hearing back from recruiters. So that's why we've included things like our screening questions and our mass email capacity. I cannot personally stress enough the importance of letting all candidates know whether they're going to be successful or not during a process. The reason be for that is when we asked them, 79% of our candidates said that people will not likely apply to a job again in the future if they didn't hear back. So by sending out a simple email just to let them know that sadly you won't be moving forward in this process could potentially keep this person in interest for your charity. They might not be the right person for you right now, but in three months time, they could be the exact person that you're looking for. So I highly recommend doing so. I mentioned previously about using anonymous recruitment. We have found that using such a tool can actually help to double the number of applications that you receive for a role. 
We have again done a lot of research into this and we've found that charity job candidates as a whole are more diverse than the UK population and charity sector. So using a tool like this can make people feel a lot more at ease when applying to a role. Here I've got a graph breaking down some of the statistics from the, uh, the questions that we asked our candidates previously. As I mentioned about lengthy application forms, 59% of people said they were put off from applying to a role after having to fill those out. So I highly recommend utilizing things like the screening questions I mentioned previously to help find out those key skills that you're looking for. I did say about charity job quick apply earlier. Now, quick apply is such a fantastic tool for getting applications in through the door. We have found from looking at the numbers that you will get up to twice the number of applications using Quick Apply than you would if you were using direct applications or any other kind of form. So again, this is really great tool for driving numbers and reaching out to people. So next, I'm going to be passing over to Beverly, who has been keeping an eye on our questions, and hopefully we'll be able to get through as many of those as we can. Thanks, Adrian. Um, we've had lots of questions come in, which is fantastic. Brilliant. Um, and we will try and answer as many as we can today in the time permitted. So let's kick off with the first one. Screening questions. What's important to include? It's a fantastic question with screening questions there. So I personally would recommend using it to find out a person's how many years of experience, for example, they have in a certain skill that's essential following a role. Um, if it's about maybe a qualification that you would like a person to have, if they have such one, you could ask them to maybe detail how many years experience, as I mentioned, or where they received the application, the qualification, sorry, from. Uh, and you can just use that to kind of really get some of those key skills and information ahead of time. It could save you having to send an email or asking them over the phone. Perfect. And another great question. When you download the anonymized candidates document, does it anonymize the attachment? So yes, it will be an anonymized attachment for you when it is sent through the anonymized recruitment. But when you reach out to them and contact it, it will change it to a unanonymized. Brilliant. Will users be able to see each other's scores and notes before submitting their own or is it kept anonymous? So yes, you will be able to see other users evaluations before you have submitted your own. So you'll be able to see what other people have thought, any notes that maybe they might have seen that you might not have caught yourself. This can be really great for that collaboration there. Great. And another question again about, sorry, users. Do other users automatically get the same level of access? Is there personal information that can be hidden? Brilliant question. So currently, when you add a new user, they are given full access. But this is something that we are working on currently. It is in our pipeline and our team are working diligently to make it so that we'll be able to limit access to certain roles. So that way you'll be able to put someone on as a main a user for one of these jobs, but also not be able to view another job should need be. But this is something that is coming in the future. Brilliant. Is the full functionality available on volunteer role listings? And am I right in thinking that voluntary roles are free? So yes, we do have the capacity to post volunteer roles for free. And we do also have the capacity to have the quick apply function available for those also. This is a good question. Can this ATS still be used if our own ATS is integrated with charity job to post jobs automatically? That is an absolutely brilliant question. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to pass over to my colleague Francesco. Now he is the architect of this whole system and he built it himself and he hopefully should be able to answer that question for you. Francesco. Sure. Hi, Adrian. Um, so our system is built in a way that um, third party ATSs can integrate with us and uh, will push jobs uh, on our site directly. So yes, we have that capability. Uh, we just need to check what 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 third party ATS uh, this specific customers is using and then we can see if, 
if we can cooperate with that third party ETS to make that possible. Thanks, Francesco. Can you use this without a cover letter and focusing on anonymous questions before seeing a CV? Or is it a CV and cover letter purely based? So great question. Um, the CV is mandatory when applying with Quick Apply, but the cover letter you can make optional. So it's not a necessity to have that on there. If you should so wish just to use screening questions and a CV, you have that full capability. Fantastic. Does this only become available for one click apply vacancies? Sorry, would you mind repeating that question? Yes, does this only become available for one click apply vacancies? So yes, the applicant tracker system is only available if you are using the quick apply function. Um, as I said to you previously, it really does help to drive applications. So I would highly recommend utilizing something like this. Right. Will interview appointments also be added to Outlook calendars and will they show as private appointments? So they will be added to the Outlook if you integrate using the link that I showed you there. And this will be just between your email and the person that you have contacted. Perfect. Another great question regarding anonymous recruitment. When a candidate applies through the portal, are they made aware of the anonymous recruiting functionality? Brilliant question. So yes, when they first look at the adverts, there will be a banner that says anonymous recruitment upon there. And when they submit it, they will know that it has been anonymized. They won't know the color food combination that they have been given, but they will know that your, their name and email have been hidden. Perfect. If a candidate responds to the email, does it log that response on the activity section? Fantastic question. So no, the email will not be received within the activity tab there, but it will be sent directly to the email that you have signed up with. Perfect. And I think you may need to recap on this one. Can this ATS still be used if our own ATS is integrated with charity jobs to post jobs automatically? Oh, OK, so uh, again for this one, just so we get all the technicalities correct, I'm going to pass back to Francesco. Yeah, we can, um, you know, this is the, the question I also replied before. We can, uh, you know, maybe we can write an email. Uh, we can get um, uh, more specific on the details so we can recap to the people interested. Thanks, Francesco. And I think we've come to our very last question. If we want to use our own applications forms, would we have to put these as the screening questions? So brilliant question. You could utilize the screening questions to help kind of eliminate that application form there by putting in the information that you were looking to find out. So as I mentioned previously, if you're looking to find out a person's years of experience within a role, if they have had previous experience, let's say in a managerial sense, you could enter those questions as screening questions and it would help eliminate the need for that application form. If you did still wish to include it afterwards, what I would recommend doing is maybe using something like the uh, mass email section there and sending them a link to that form there. Having that first initial reach out to candidates can really make them feel heard and is making them much more likely to fill that out for you. Brilliant. And we've had just one more question, Adrian. Um, can you integrate with Google Calendar as well as Outlook? So for this one as well, I'm just going to pass to Francesco just so we can get full clarification on that. Of course, Adrian. Um, so just to clarify what that integration looks like and what it is, um, it is essentially um, um, uh, it's, it's a calendar feed. That's what it is called. So essentially, if you go to your Google Calendar or to your Outlook Calendar, you can basically feed the events from Charity Job Recruiter to your calendar. So essentially what it does, it shows you the events that are on Charity Job Recruiter directly on your calendar. Note that this, this is not a two-way integration. So on the Charity Job Recruiter 
calendar, you will not be able to see your personal calendar events. So it's basically, you know, in short, it's just a, it's a, what is called a calendar feed. So on your personal calendar, you can see all the events uh, from the Charity Job Recruiter. And these links can be added to any calendar. So Google Calendar, Outlook, Exchange, uh, Apple, whatever you best like. Thanks, Francesco. We have had another question come in, but I think we're going to have to end it there as time is ticking on. Um, so back to you, Adrian. All right, brilliant. Thank you, Bev and Francesca. I really do appreciate that. Um, yes, so the next steps following on from here. So if you do have any more questions about the ATS that you think you might remember, you know, maybe just after we get off the call, etc., what we can do is I'll just come out of the screen here. So when we go onto our dashboard, you will note in the top right your account manager. Now, should you wish to ask them any questions around this, they are all absolutely experts in everything charity job and they'll be able to help you out with this. If you wanted to see any kind of more visual follow throughs of any of the information, what we can do is if we go up to the top right here to the help center. And scroll down to the bottom for managing applications. We can see we've got a couple videos that my colleague Camila has recorded for us here, just breaking down some of the things I have mentioned today, should you need any help. Um, what I also will be doing is I will be going uh, in the next week or so, be giving a call to all of you, sort of checking in, seeing how you've gotten on with the system, should you need any further assistance or if you have any more questions. Lastly, I just want to thank you all for your time. I really do appreciate it. And I really do hope you enjoy using the Charity Job Recruiter system. Thank you all very much.